wonderful to see so many people uh, involved in this effort. You know, I'm a history buff, and one of the things that I found very inter interesting in this country during the days of slavery, uh, particularly in some states like uh, Mississippi, uh, there were actually more slaves than there were slave owners. And the slave owners were always concerned about an insurrection. And therefore, in order to make sure that they could keep the slave population under control, they lied to them. They would tell the ones in the house, you're better than the ones in the yard. The ones in the yard, you're better than the ones in the field. And they would keep them at each other's throats and that way they could keep them divided. Well, don't you find it quite interesting today that there are elements in our society who want to make sure that they continue to manufacture all kinds of strife between black people who don't follow their agenda and those who think for themselves versus the ones who happily do anything they want them to do as long as they keep them in a dependent situation. Yeah. And they don't like any talk about independence, about empowerment of people. And I think that's what we have to do. We have to begin to talk about how you actually empower the African American community. In America today, the African American com community controls more than one trillion dollars in assets. There are less than 10 countries in the world with a trillion dollars in their GDP. Wow. Gives you some idea of the economic power potentially in the black community. But what we have to teach people is how you turn that dollar over in your own community two or three times before you send it out. That's how you generate wealth. And then we also have to emphasize the importance of reaching back and taking the next person by the hand and bringing them along. This is the way it's been done in many other communities. This is the way it's been done in the Jewish community and the Korean community. We must learn to do it. It would be unbelievable, the power that would be there. Now, you know, the secular progressives, Democrats, love to say that we are the saviors of the African-American community. We are the ones who are gonna give them free health care, and we're going to give them housing subsidies, and we're going to give them food stamps and all kinds of things, and people have actually grown quite dependent on these things, and they don't need to be dependent, and this is one of the things that I've been talking with Donald Trump about uh, in earnest. How do we get people out of that situation? Well, one great jump start. There's over $2.1 trillion overseas right now. Uh, money that's not being brought here because of our ridiculous corporate tax rates. Okay, uh, when we fix the tax uh, you know, structure in this country, uh, a lot of that will improve, but one of the immediate things that could be done is to declare a six month hiatus on taxes for that money so it can be repatriated without one penny of tax. But the only stipulation would be that 10% of that has to be used in enterprise zones and to create jobs for people who are unemployed, underemployed, or on welfare. You want to talk about a stimulus package. That would be the greatest stimulus since FDR's New Deal, and it wouldn't cost the taxpayers one penny. And that, that is what's known as low-hanging fruit. And that would get things done, but it would also, and this is even more important, it would also get business and industry to start thinking again about investing in their communities. This is what used to happen. People used to think about strengthening their communities, but the government kind of took it over and, and everybody else got out of that business. That's the business they need to be in because it's at the local level where relationships develop, where appropriate types of things are done to empower that community. This is what we need to be thinking about. This is what we need to be advocating. You will hear those things coming out of Donald Trump, but we all have to also advocate it because no one knows about this. And believe me, the Democrats will try to find ways to demonize anything that you do. 
I don't pay them very much attention, to be quite frank with you, because the, the only approval that I need is the approval of God. Amen. And, Amen. You know, that's, Amen. that's the other thing that we must remember about the African American community. How were we able to survive slavery and Jim Crow and racism and all these things that have happened? It was because we had a relationship with God and we had strong families. Faith and family, we must bring those things back. And we must be willing to talk about them because, you know, 73% of babies in the black community are born out of wedlock. Wow. Now think about that. It's, it's PC inappropriate to talk about that. But here's what you need to know. Usually when that woman has that first baby, her education stops at that point. And that child is four times more likely to grow up in poverty, to end up in the penal or the welfare system. We have to begin to talk about this once again. And some of the policies that exist in our country where, where men are sh eschewed, they're get, get them out of the way. Because if you have a man in your house, then you're not gonna get your benefit. You know, these things make absolutely no sense. There's a whole host of things I could talk all night about them. But it's gonna be up to us, each one of us in our sphere of influence, to make the point, and you will hear a lot more of this coming from the Trump administration. Thank you.